Hi, this is Dr. Gregory Sadler. I'm a professor of philosophy and the president and founder of an educational consulting company called Reason.io, where we put philosophy into practice. I've studied and taught philosophy for over 20 years, and I find that many people run into difficulties reading classic philosophical texts. Sometimes it's the way things are said or how the text is structured. But the concepts themselves are not always that complicated, and that's where I come in. To help students and lifelong learners, I've been producing longer lecture videos and posting them to YouTube. Many viewers say they find them useful. What you're currently watching is part of a new series of shorter videos, each of them focused on one core concept from an important philosophical text. I hope you find it useful as well. In Book 9 of his Nicomachean Ethics, Aristotle is going to make a case for us why it is that we really do need friends, uh, whether we're in good times, prosperity, or in bad times, hardship. And it's going to be for, for different reasons. So let's take a look at the, the reasons, what it is that a friend actually does for us, or why it is that we need friends in, in our lives. If we look at bad times, hardship, right? Aristotle says that those who are unfortunate, those who, say, have encountered some sort of uh, disease or a calamity or who have something wrong going on in their family, those who have lost their job, those who are experiencing difficult grief, you know, all these sorts of things are what we could call hardships. And a person like this needs assistance. That's part of what a friend is there for to supply what it is that we're, we're lacking. And Aristotle, of course, is not the first person to come up with this. This runs throughout the literature of antiquity, <coughs> the, the notion that it's really in bad times that you can tell who really are friends with you. You know, you suffer a major depression who actually calls on you and checks on you and tries to you know, help you out and support you. You uh, in, incur some sort of financial loss. Who's going to be there uh, with the, the, the loan or perhaps even the gift to help you get back on, on your feet. That's when you can tell uh, the people who are just hanging around because they, they like to be friendly from the people who are really friends. Aristotle says that we, in cases like that, we particularly need the useful friends, right? The people who are going to provide us with some benefits. This doesn't mean that we only need uh, people who are friends on the basis of utility, because if you remember correctly, People who are good people will be useful to us. They will provide benefits. That's part of what it means for them to be good people. So friends, friends in terms of virtue will also be, in this case, useful friends. And this is where they, they will show their usefulness, right? Um, another thing that, that goes along with this, and this is really quite interesting. Aristotle says that sadness or pain, uh, lupe in Greek, is eased in some way, or lessened, or, or taken away by, by sharing it with friends. So being able to uh, have them there, being able to say your piece, to unburden yourself, to complain, to, to vent, as we often say, uh, plays an important role within friendships in terms of, of uh, hardship. Now, notice that it probably, Aristotle doesn't say when people are doing well that they ought to be engaging in this, but perhaps there's some scope for it. He does say that this is something that we don't have uh, you know, real hard and fast rules for, and we don't even fully understand this uh, by itself, he, he says as well. Um, and there's an interesting dynamic uh, that goes along with sharing misfortune. I want to, to read this to you because um, it's, it's quite uh, uh, important. It says, the pleasure that the company of friends gives is of a mixed nature. It's true that the very sight of them is pleasant, especially in time of misfortune, and is a considerable help in assuaging sorrow. So, you know, our friends showing up when we're, when we're sick, our friends actually being there rather than saying, yeah, um, take care of yourself, you know, when we're having some sort of psychological crisis, uh, when uh, adversity has hit us, um, that, that, you know, we, we enjoy seeing them. Um, and he says, um, it, a friend, if tactful, can, can, can comfort us with look and word, if he knows our characters and what things give us pleasure and pain. But, on the other hand, to see another pained by our, by our own misfortunes can be painful. 
So on the one hand, we would like our friends to be there, right? On the other hand, the closer they are to us, the better they know us, the more we know that our misfortune is going to pain them. So what happens in a lot of cases? People conceal what's going on with them. Not necessarily because it's shameful. I mean, that's sometimes the, the issue, you know. There's some, some uh, you know, Paul, Paulinian thorn in the flesh that you don't want to talk about because it's embarrassing and your friends would be even more embarrassed to tell them about it. But in some cases, it's, you just don't want to cause them uh, pain or worry or, or sort of hardship of their own in finding out about that. You know, you may, your, your financial situation may, may be badly off and you know that if you mention it to somebody else, um, they will, of course, step in and take care of it and you don't want them to, right? So Aristotle's pointing out a dynamic that we see going on today. And he says, um, so people of, of, you know, he calls it manly natures, we should think of it as sort of strong, assertive natures, shrink from making their friends share their pain. And unless a person is ex ex uh, excessively insensitive, they cannot bear the pain that his pain gives to them. And they won't suffer others to lament with them because they're not given to lamentation themselves. But weaker people, uh, and he says womenish men, so people who are, are more prone to, you know, being, you know, effusive in, in their feelings, we might say, uh, like those who mourn with them and love them as true friends and sympathizers. So he says, well, you know, either way it kind of fits the person, but we ought to try to be the, the higher person in this. So he's adopting a, a you know, more resolute attitude. And if you think about this, what happens? You know, people on the bus sometimes are not feeling happy about something, and so they turn to the other person on the bus, who they don't know from Adam, and just start talking to them about their misfortunes. Aristotle would say, well, that's, that's a sign of, you know, the kind of person that is. Um, you know, we make movies, of course, where somebody carries around their grief until finally something happens, and then they blurt it out, and then we, of course, as the audience, are sympathizing with them, but the person who they're talking to is like, oh, I, just, I didn't know, you know, and Lifetime movies are, uh, I think, a lot of those are along those lines, because it's like a trope. Now, Aristotle goes on, and he says, what else can we draw from this? He says, it may be thought that we ought to be eager to invite our friends to share our good fortune, but reluctant to ask them to come to us in misfortune, because we uh, should impart to others as little as possible of what is evil, right? And he gives a, a proverb here, my own misfortune is enough, I don't need to impose any on, on you. So he says, we should summon our friends to our aid chiefly when they will be of great service to us at the cost of little trouble to themselves. But conversely, it's fitting we should go uninvited and readily to those in misfortune, for the, it is the part of a friend to render service, and especially to those in need and without being asked, since assistance so rendered is more noble and more pleasant for both parties. But to the prosperous, though we should go readily to help them, we should be slow in going when it's a question of enjoying their good things. Aristotle's saying, you know, we should act differently towards others than we do towards our, our, ourselves. We shouldn't be so quick to rely upon friends to fill in the gaps, but we should be filling in our friends' gaps uh, as, as quickly and as willingly, at, you know, uh, with good cheer, with, with good will as possible. So there's quite a bit to say about how friendship works in misfortune. Let's talk now about friendship in prosperity, in good times. Aristotle says that the prosperous are going to want companions. So it's not that they actually need something that they don't have from those companions, like food or drink or money or you know, opportunities, things like that. Um, but rather they want to have people that they can benefit, people that they can provide something nice to. You know, they invite people to parties, for example, right? You have a dinner party, you're inviting guests into your home, and you're sharing food and, and probably drink with them, uh, music, you know. You're creating an occasion where people can come together. And you're not actually saying, um, unless you're a, not a very good friend, um, what am I going to get out of this dinner party, right? That, that's what the sort of risers and schemers do. They hold dinner parties like that. But, but good people hold dinner parties because they want to actually give pleasure to their friends. They want to create an occasion where some good things can happen, conversation. 
uh, discussion. And they, they want to share things with their friends. That, that's part of what goes on when we're feeling prosperity. That's also one reason why um, you know, people who, who do have a lot of resources um, sometimes you know, end up spending a lot of those resources in, in precisely those kinds of activity. This is where the virtue of generosity and on a larger scale, the virtue of magnificence come in. Um, friends also give us pleasure in, in their turn, making our life pleasant. It's not just about you know, being in, in a chamber by yourself, you know, with the pleasure center of your brain, getting stimulated. Friends are not just about dopamine, you know, the way people like to talk about these days, is, you know, sort of the magic uh, bullet that, that, that you know, has to do with everything. Um, it's about the, the, the breadth of one's life. Sharing in friendship, uh, you know, having these connections, is part of what makes for a good life. So even the virtuous person, as Aristotle says, is not going to be virtuous by themselves. They're going to want to have friends with them. Another key idea here is that human beings are, by their very nature, social animals. This is something that Aristotle says in the politics. He also says it here in the Nicomachean Ethics. Social animals is actually a translation of politike, which means animals that live together in communities. And we, we do that. We have the smallest community is the family, and then we go all the way up to, in our, our day, the nation state, or perhaps even the international community, with all sorts of other interpenetrating uh, communities along the way. And we are creatures that, that do indeed desire to have connection with other human beings. Um, you know, a great example of that is you're watching this on the internet right now. The internet is an expression of this factor of us human beings being social animals. It also opens up a lot, a lot of possibilities for people to flame each other and troll each other and, you know, be mean to each other. But that comes about as a possibility on the basis of this. The last thing that I want to say about uh, prosperity or good times, Aristotle has this very interesting expression, uh, which he didn't coin, but he, he repeats at several times. A friend is a second self, another you, another person, right, who is, who's like you. And to be in a relationship of friendship means to, in, in a certain respect, get to know yourself through this other person, through how they see you, how they interact with you. Now, what's the upshot of this? This really has to do primarily with friendships in terms of virtue, the good things about ourselves. And uh, Aristotle says, uh, here we go. Um, if life is desirable, and especially so for good people, because existence is good for them, and so pleasant, because they're pleased by the perception of what is intrinsically good, and if the virtuous person feels towards their friend in the same way as that person feels towards themselves, for his friend is a second self, then just as a man's own existence is desirable for that person, so or nearly so is the friend's existence also desirable. But as we saw, it is the consciousness of oneself that is good that makes existence desirable. Such consciousness is pleasant in itself. Therefore, a man ought to share his friend's consciousness of his existence. This is attained by living together, conversing, communicating their thoughts to each other. This is the meaning of living together as applied to human beings. When we're doing that, Aristotle says we not only get to know the other person, we're also getting to know ourself, sort of reflected to ourselves in the other person. So if happiness consists in virtuous activity, we can't actually see our own virtuous activity as such entirely on our own by, say, looking in a mirror. The friend is indeed the mirror uh, through which we are able to contemplate our own virtuous state and see our own goodness and be happy about it as a result. Now, that's not the only function the friend does, and of course, this is reciprocal, so if, if we're two virtuous people, my friend is also getting to know him or herself through me. Uh, what this, of course, requires is that we be virtuous. We actually have something to offer, because this mirroring factor 
can work as well. If we have bad qualities, our friend is probably going to see those bad qualities because they spend time with us, we communicate with them, uh, our motives that are less than praiseworthy come to the fore, and then you know maybe they'll conceal the fact that they know that from us, or maybe they will tell us about that and we're not going to be entirely happy. So a lot depends here on, on actually having virtue. But so, you know, in, whether it be in good times or in bad times, Aristotle thinks we need friends and we need them for different reasons.